Well, we did it. We did. We went to Skagway, Alaska. And let's face it, you have not experienced Alaska until you have experienced Husky sled dogs. And the Mushers Camp and Dog Sled Experience is the perfect way to go do just that. In Skagway, we boarded a bus for a 35 minute drive through the Tongass National Forest. <laughs> <laughs> the bus was very comfortable. It was air conditioned, even though it was only about 60 degrees that day. Yeah. Um, I was cold. He wore shorts all day. Um, but it was a lovely ride up to the Mushers Camp. And when we arrived at the Mushers Camp, there was this giant. Four by four Unimog. <laughs> I don't even I've know. I've never how heard to say tell that. of that, but that's what they called it. <laughs> and. Uh, there was some souvenir shops there and, uh, and some the bathrooms. Bathroom. Yes, so that was like your first bathroom break before you got on the 4x4 to go up to the dog sleds because there was no restrooms along the way. Yeah, take that bathroom break while you got it. Yes. So along the way, um, it was a very beautiful ride through the forest. We saw waterfalls and... Um, that crazy moss. That moss was everywhere, wasn't it? That moss was just... It was a floor... Of moss. I wanted to go out and roll on it. <laughs> the this guy, the... He, he was joking, said if you didn't get your bathroom trip down at the bottom of the mountain, this was your place to go. <laughs> this is a, it's a primitive uh, musher's dog house. Yes. Mm -hmm. And this was a crazy, insane, narrow road. It was literally the rock wall on either side of you. It's definitely a one lane ride. And this thing we're riding in has no room to go anywhere. And if another one is coming down the mountain, you have, they have like little shoulder areas and you pull over, they're radioing each other and that he's coming down the mountain. So you pull over to this little shoulder area and <laughs> that one passes you by and you get back on the road again. And the other thing was that we saw, which was absolutely fascinating to me, was granite in its natural state. Just like these huge rocks. As opposed to its supernatural state. <laughs> <laughs> no, as opposed to its state in your kitchen. <laughs> oh, that's right. Okay. <laughs> as we were approaching where the dogs were at, they were so loud. You could hear them. They were howling and barking. And we pulled up and they were all um, harnessed up to the sled. They were ready to rock and roll. Well, there was 200 dogs there. So 200 dogs and they were excited to do what they do. Oh yeah, they were totally excited. So the first thing they did was we weren't allowed to touch the dogs at that point. They just kind of shuffled you past the dogs to the sled. Um, and it was a six passenger sled. Um, we got to be fortunate enough to ride in the very front of the sled. Um, and it, it was a very... Bumpy ride. Bumpy ride, and <laughs> it was an exciting ride. Because let me tell you what, when that musher got back there and did his little whistle or whatever it was he did, those dogs took off like a bullet. <laughs> those dogs were totally focused on that musher. They really were. So with our whole ride on the sled was about a mile, but it was, the dogs were hot, which yeah. we thought was just crazy that they could be that hot in 60 degree weather. But they were panting and about half a mile into it, we stopped and let them take a break. Um, now these dogs were smaller than we thought they were going to be and probably a little less shaggy. Yeah, we, I expected, I don't know, Great, huge dogs. dogs. Yeah, yeah, that's what I expected. These great, now, yeah. and these were small, lean dogs. Um, I guess when you think of uh, world class runners and humans, they aren't big either. They're skinny too, yeah. and that's what these kind of dogs kind of look like. I guess. And then it was back on the Ugg Mug. Unimog. <laughs> back on the Unimog. <laughs> back down the mountain um, to a. Uh, uh, this beautiful little boardwalk area where we could take pictures of um, the scenery there. And you could actually see our cruise ship yes. from where we were at. 
And it just seemed to fit there so beautifully. <laughs> yeah, it just looked like it was part of the scenery. Um, so then we actually uh, took a bathroom break before they rallied us into the Mushers Camp area. And they had um, uh, one of the experienced mushers there and he did a great presentation um told us that over 200 musher dogs are um, housed there in the summertime and they were training during the summer for to get ready for the i did a rod yeah it's easy for me to say the i did a rod race and the yukon quest these are two really big famous uh not just in alaska but worldwide races where people come from all over and uh race this gigantic race so in the summertime basically the dogs are there to train and to raise their puppies yep. that's basically what they do in the summer camp and um he explained that the race will start off with 10 or more dogs and all the supplies and then as they get along on this race because it's like a thousand miles long uh they start taking dogs off the first ones they'll take off, of course, are one that may have got injured or, you know, pulled a muscle or something. And then after that, they just start taking the slower dogs off. And then as they've used up the supplies, because the, the sled is is loaded with the supplies for the humans, as well as the dogs and shelter and medicines and all that stuff. And so as the sled gets lighter, less and less dogs are actually needed. And we found out that they don't actually take, you know, 15 dog houses they just sleep right yeah, they there just sleep out there in the snow and little tents and you know stuff and the the male dogs are typically put in the back nearer to the sled yes um because they're your, your power they're the ones that get the sled moving and the female dogs they're the fastest <laughs> they're in the front which i really think is just because the males are chasing after the females <laughs> this, is, this is typical not 100 percent of the time but that's usually the way it rolls and then of course the males they, halfway through the race like dude i, I got something i gotta do i yep. got a place i gotta be <laughs> <laughs> and then we moved over to um where the puppies were at and they called it the kennel talk and there was um q a time with the um handlers the handlers and they had all these different um areas they had the nursery which was where the little tiny ones were at and oh they had, yes they had the kindergarten where the <laughs> where they were out there just crazy just running all over the place <laughs> and then they had the area where the females um were kept if they were their their puppies were already didn't need them they were already old enough but then the the mothers that still had very young puppies she of course got to stay with her puppies and we got to hold the puppies and uh, there's a couple things that you need to note about this particular excursion. As it is a great excursion, it's about three and a half hours long, and it's rated five star. So it's definitely worth the trip, but there are some things you need to know, especially if you're handicapped or if you have any type of disabilities. There's a lot of uneven terrain, and it's a very bumpy ride. Oh, and it, it, both rides, the 4x4 as well as the sled, extremely bumpy. If you have any type of back problems or neck problems, it's probably way too bumpy for you. And pregnant, mm -mm, I, there's no way I would do that pregnant. No, no. Um, no. And to get up into the Unimog. Unimog <laughs> and the sleds, uh, you got to be able to pick your leg up eight inches. So you got to be able to to have some mobility to get yourself into these vehicles. Mm -hmm. And they're not there to help you. Um, it's not that type of excursion because it's there. They have so much to take care of. They've, they're there trying to take care of the dogs and trying to make sure that the dogs are safe and you're safe, that if you have mobility issues of being able to get upstairs, um, it's just not going to be the excursion for you. Yeah, I think if you're uh, in a scooter or wheelchair bound and can't, yeah. Get out without assistance. It's not for you. No, it's not for you at all. But if you have enough mobility that you can get out and, and walk just enough, even if you got to use a cane, mm -hmm. you know, and you can and you can get over this terrain and up those steps, then uh, you might have a good time. It's quite a bit of walking, and the terrain was um, rocks and sand and things slide underneath your feet. So, um, and then the other thing is, even though they do allow children. Um, 
They're very strict about the children understanding the rules when it comes to the dogs. If they're afraid of dogs or if they don't understand that you can't just run up to a dog, they don't allow them to interact with the dogs. Yeah, it's not about the age of your child. It's does your child know not to run up and slap a dog on the head, run up and right. try to stick its hand in its food bowl, or try to give the dog a kiss? These are things no because throughout the winter these dogs typically are only with their mushers so they love their mushers i mean every time the musher turned around those dogs their heads would turn i mean they were following him no matter where he went it was all eyes on daddy basically mm -hmm. um and so even though they're there for the summer you'll notice that they're very timid they're very shy um they're just not used to people so if you're afraid of dogs or like Chet said, if you have a child that just doesn't understand the concept of how dogs can be, it's better to leave the children behind. But if your kid's well behaved and you can handle it, this is a great excursion. It was definitely worth the money. Any, oh, yes. We definitely give it five stars. It was so good, in fact, that we decided the next time we go to Alaska, we want to not only ride a dog sled, but we want to do it on the ice next yes. time. Yes, next time we're doing it on the ice, yes. And that's in 2023. Next year. Yes, for my birthday. We're going Yay. to go next year, so hey, maybe we'll have a group cruise. Right now, we've only got 35 in our group. <laughs> <laughs> we need a bigger group, so please, subscribe. subscribe. <laughs>